Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I am back with a word study. I know I've had many comments from you guys and messages asking if we are continuing with this uh, series that I'm doing, and yes, we are. If you're not following me on Instagram, that's typically where I update you on the day-to-day, -day, what's going on, um, and why I was kind of absent the last few weeks. Uh, we've just been really busy, just trying to get videos out when I can. So here we're back with word study. I try to do these on Wednesdays, but Lenora had a good name for it. Instead of word study Wednesday, it's word study whenever. <laughs> so I had sat down to do this Wednesday, yesterday, um, but I needed to refilm it. I didn't get part of it done. So here we are, word study is happening. Um, ideally this would happen every week, but that doesn't always happen either. So make sure that you're subscribed to my channel, click on the bell notification, that will notify you when I do have new videos pop up, that way you don't miss them. Uh, down in the description box, I will link the uh, playlist for password studies that also includes um, like a detailed video that I did describing like how I go through the word study, the resources that I use, where I pull commentary from, kind of how I go through that process. Uh, I tried to move that up to the top of the playlist so it should be easier for you guys to find. Also everything that I'm using and talking about will be linked down there as well. And so today's word study is going to be just a tad different. Um, the card itself and the structure that I'm doing is the same, but where I'm getting the information will be a little bit different. So I'm working with this set of cards. This is a newer set from Open Journey. This is actually included with the newest devotional kit that she has over there. So this is the Way of Light. I did do an unboxing for this release, so I will have that link down below for you guys. There is a physical kit as well as a digital kit and some add-ons, things like that. Um, the physical kit does not come with a stamp set, but it does come with a full set of Word study cards as well as some verse cards and tons and tons and tons of stickers and pieces like that that you can can create with. And so like I mentioned in the unboxing, this particular kit has enough product in it that you can do several different projects. And that's kind of what I'm doing. So I'm going to be working on the word focus cards that are in there and kind of create my own project out of that. I think what I'm going to do is cinch bind them at the top so that they're all together in um, a grouping. And they do, the words do go along with the different uh, stations in the study. Now, if you don't know what I'm referring to, make sure you check out the unboxing. I go into detail about what this particular devotional is about. We're looking at the stations of the cross or the way to the cross. Uh, I know some of you weren't familiar with that. I will also link a uh, article from gotquestions.org that goes over um, the stations of the cross if that's something that's new to you. Uh, I really like their perspective and how they break down the traditional versus biblical version, um, Ingrid's follows the biblical version. So it, it was a really good resource and I really enjoyed um, doing this study because it's not something that I had been familiar with. And so um, because this is broken up a little bit differently in the devotional, I'm kind of working through it a little bit differently. So the cards, I've gone ahead and lined them out. There is a card, well, at least one or two cards that goes with each one of the stations. There's 14 stations. Uh, so I think that there's a total of about 30 cards in the kit. Uh, so I did go ahead and put those in order. Um, and so we'll kind of be working through those, but there is enough stickers and things uh, that you can use these on your cards. You could do Bible journaling entries. There are the verse cards, but I'm doing, um, here's a little sneak peek at the project that I'm doing. This is separate from the word study. Rather than do Bible journaling entries, I'm creating this little um, project here. And so this is actually, uh, I will do a full uh, like flip through of this once it's all put together. So stay tuned for that. But this is an accordion folio from Tim Holt. This is a newer product. It's with like a mixed media cardstock is the base of it. Um, and it's just this vanilla color. It does come with a tie to tie it all together. And so the idea is that it's a blank canvas for you to kind of do whatever you want with. So it comes just nothing's tacked down. It does have the crease marks in there. And so I'm using the stickers and bits and pieces from the kit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create little pockets. So for each one of the stations, I will have a tag or you know a little tuck spot. There's also like a, uh, another piece. Let me grab it real quick. There's another little piece, I haven't painted this one yet, but this comes in there as well. So you could do another fold out element, you could uh, tape this so that you create more pockets. Uh, and so I will have all those stations 
individually on pieces tucked into these pockets and so the project will be all self-contained. Now you could do a Bible journaling project with this as well, but because of the structure of it, I thought it would be uh, kind of fun to do something different. So stay tuned, I will have a closer look at that once it's finished. Um, but today we're gonna be starting with the word focus card. So that is where these are coming from. Um, it's indicated here, it says the way of light. It also has Via Lucas on the back so you know that they go with um, this particular kit. So the very first station is uh, Jesus rises from the dead. So the resurrection card is the one that we will be working on today. Now, as far as the word study goes, everything else will be the same as I've been doing it. And so I went ahead and uh, started the study looking at the Strong's Concordance number, which is G386. So uh, it is G for Greek. So this is the New Testament um, word that we're looking at. Uh, transliteration is anastasis. Broke it down with the pronunciation here as well. Um, if this is your first word study video that you've watched in mind, you might be wondering why, wh why we do this. Why am I taking all of this? Why am I looking at the original language? Uh, the original language really helps you better understand the scripture. Uh, some of the nuances are lost as we translate into other languages. And so you get to see some connections between different verses that you may not have had those connections if you were looking at it in like, let's say the English um, translation. It also just gives you a focused way to study. And so what I love about Ingrid and how she picks these, you know, I'm sure that there are a multitude, there are a multitude, as I look this up um, in Blue Letter Bible Hub, Bible app, there are a ton more verses that refer to resurrection, but she chose one specifically that tie in with the study that we're doing um, in her devotional. So they're very specific to um, the events that are happening in here, the, you know, the verses that are connected to that. Uh, and so it really gives you a nice focused study and a deeper way to work through the devotional content. Now she does have a ton of verses in the devotional content here, um, but the verses on the card are additional verses to, than to what she has here. So so it just kind of gives you a little more intense study. So broke that down. Now with the word anastasis, there are uh, two different ways that it's used. Um, the first way is just a simple a rising up rising, for example, from a seat. So standing from a seat, you can use that as resurrection. Um, but the way that it's being used, and we're going to see through these verses, is the second way. And that's a rising from the dead. Um, we see that in reference to Christ, um, his resurrection, uh, all men at the end of the present age. So all Christians, all believers in Christ um, at the end of time will be resurrected. And then you see it also used as the resurrection of certain ones in history who were restored to life. Um, you'll see this in Hebrews 11.35 as the reference they're using. But um, throughout the Bible, you know, Lazarus, for example, being resurrects, resurrected, that same word, uh, Greek word, is used in those instances. So I went ahead and wrote out each one of the verses. I looked them up, wrote them out. Now, when I started doing these word focus cards, I didn't always do that. I would only kind of pick and choose a few verses. But over time, I have started writing out every single one of them and looking at commentary, um, looking at cross references, and it really can just carry on like a multi-day study. And that's kind of how these word studies have turned into for me. That's why I haven't had them on a weekly basis all the time. Um, it's because once I start and think it's going to be a quick study, it, it ends up being a lot longer than I suspected. So you can do a quick, you know, study, just take one of these verses and focus on it, but you can really extend this over, you know, multiple days. So the main verse that I will be focusing on, on my card and my study today will be John eleven twenty five. This is Jesus speaking to Martha. Uh, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even if he dies. So this is one of Jesus's um, big I am statements. Uh, and so I will be focusing on that. We'll come back to it. My uh, commentary will refer to this verse. But going on um, to the other verses that she has, um, they are all going to be New Testament. So Acts 1, 22, uh, this is... Uh, Peter speaking to the group. Now, Judas has already betrayed um, Jesus. He's died. He, you know, has been resurrected. And so they're looking basically for a successor to Judas, a replacement for Judas in their group of apostles. And so this is what he's listing as a requirement for that person that will be um, replacing. So beginning with the baptism of John until the day that he was taken up from us, uh, one of these being an apostle must be become a witness with us of his resurrection. So one of the requirements that needs to be in place is this person, this man, needs to have witnessed the resurrection. Um, and then we'll, we'll revisit that in Acts 4.33, um, kind of the importance of that, but that is what he's referring to here. Moving on to Acts 
231. Uh, He looked ahead and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was neither abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh suffer decay. Uh, And so this is actually uh, referring back to uh, Psalms. So let me pull this out. Like I said, we kind of went all over the place with these verses. Uh, And this is, again, I say over and over and over, the importance of having the Old Testament and the New Testament. I know that there are some people who kind of throw out the Old Testament, just focus on the New Testament, but the Old Testament is constantly pointing forward to Christ, um, the necessity for Christ, um, and just kind of, you know, alluding to what's going to happen in the New Testament. And so what we have uh, here is Peter is making a lot of references back into the Old Testament. Uh, so f- from 30 on, it's, um, this is Acts 2, 30. Uh, and so because he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn to him with an oath to seat one of his, his descendants on his throne, he looked ahead and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was neither abandoned to Hades nor did his flesh suffer decay. Um, and so this is Peter. He's referring to David speaking back in the Psalms. And so if we go back, um, he's actually talking about Psalm uh, 16. And so if you go to Psalm 1610, uh, as you read through this, you may, you may miss this little point here. It says, for you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. And this is speaking about Jesus. The Holy One is Jesus. So all the way back, David in the Psalms is referring to Jesus, um, that he is not going to be allowed to undergo decay. And so we see that when he, he's dead, he's in the tomb for three days before he's resurrected. He does not decay. He is, you know, brought back to life. And so you're seeing that all the way back in Psalms. So again, another, you know, fun thing about doing these deeper studies and looking at those references is you get to pick up on some of those things, um, that you may have missed even as you're reading through that Psalm. Uh, Moving on to Acts 43, this is where it's tied to Acts 122 when they're giving the requirements for um, the apostle. Uh, And with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and abundant grace was upon them all. So they were going out and they were giving testimony. They're telling the story of Christ's resurrection. That's how they're, you know, sharing with people. Um, And so it was important that the replacement for Judas had actually witnessed that to be able to testify to that. And so that is what Acts 4.33 is talking about there. Moving forward to Romans 6.5, it says, For we have become united with him in the likeness of his death. Certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So like Christ, as Christians, you know, we kind of embrace the resurrection, the, the hope that we have that we're going to be, you know, resurrected and spend eternity um, with him. But along with that is tied the suffering. You know, Jesus suffered as he was leading up to the death and resurrection. There was, you know, torture and things like that. And so with the resurrection, there is that suffering, that torture. And so as Christians, we are told over and over in the Bible, we are going to suffer that same that same experience. We are going to suffer. We are going to be persecuted. Um, and we need to embrace that as well, just as, you know, Jesus embraced it. He was God. He could have very easily um, not gone through all of that, and, but he did. That was just part of the process. And so um, we will see this referred um, to by Paul in Philippians, which is the next passage that we're looking at, Philippians 3, 10 through 11. Um, If you follow the story of Paul, you know he suffered a lot. I mean, he induced a lot of suffering um, when he was Saul, but once he became Paul, he went through, you know, shipwrecks and times in jail and and beatings and all kinds of just craziness. So he definitely suffered. Um, He says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. So again, embracing the suffering. I know it's tough in the moment, um, but knowing that there is a great blessing in the end, um, eternity with Christ. We we just have to get through, get through the suffering here on earth. Uh, Moving on to 1 Peter 1, 3. Uh, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So if you are somebody that struggles with prayer, um, praying the scriptures is a a great way to to pray. If you have a hard time thinking about what to pray or how to pray, um, this would be a great kind of prayer to structure your prayers around. Uh, Giving thanks that um, we are able to be born again and to live with a hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus' resurrection is a hope that we can hold on to. He defeated death, and because he defeated death, we will be able to do the same. 
uh, Luke 2, 34. And Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, Behold, this child, the child being Jesus, is appointed for the fall and rise of many in Israel and as a sign to be opposed. Uh, and so this is, you know, back at the birth of Jesus. Um, and he's telling Mary that he, uh, you know, he is going to, basically execute judgment upon those who don't, who oppose him and don't follow him. But there's also a rise, a resurrection for those who do. And so if I'm reading in an NASB translation, and so if you are reading in a translation and you read one of the verses that Ingrid has here for you, you may go, well, that, that word isn't there. I don't see resurrection here. Um, and so if you pull up the Blue Letter Bible app, um, there's a function in there where you can see an interlinear. So you actually see the English version next to um, the original language. And so that's kind of how I'm able to you then go through and pick out um, where that word is. And so this word rise is the same word, uh, anastasis here, the G386 number. Um, and so MacArthur has a note on um, this passage here, uh, Luke 234. He says, to those who reject him, he's a stone of stumbling. That's 1 Peter 2.8. Those who receive him are raised up, Ephesians 2.6. So again, the importance of, you know, following Christ, not being in opposition to Christ, um, there is going to be a, a fall, a fall into the pit of eternity in hell. Uh, Luke 14, 14 says, and you will be blessed since they do not have the means to repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Um, and so Jesus is speaking to a group and they were having a tendency to kind of want to, you know, do these, these dinners with all the well-off fancy, rich, well-to-do people. Um, and he's telling them, no, it's better to invite the poor, the least of these. Um, and so there was this, this, this tendency to, to want to surround yourself with people who were going to benefit you. It was very self-serving. Um, and to invite those who are the least of these and to serve those, that is a selfless way to live. And so that is also an eternal perspective. So the reward isn't going to be while you're here living on earth. It is not going to be a material reward, it's going to be an eternal reward, and you will be rewarded at the end. Um, God sees it all and sees your heart and sees, you know, kind of the intention behind it. Now, it isn't saying that you shouldn't ever associate yourself with those people. It also lists like parents, brothers, sisters, things like that in the verse above it. Um, it's not saying that you shouldn't ever associate with those people, but don't associate with only those people just for the sake of benefit for yourself. You should be selfless, living um, life with an eternal perspective. So going back to the verse that we are focusing on here is John eleven twenty five. 25. Uh, again, this is Jesus speaking to Martha, one of the I am statements. He's, uh, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even if he dies. So David Guzik says, uh, to know Jesus is to know resurrection and life. To have Jesus is to have resurrection and life. MacArthur says, uh, no resurrection or eternal life exists outside of the Son of God. He is the only way. There are many faiths and beliefs out there that preach and teach that there are multiple ways, multiple paths, you know, multiple truths, whatever it is to get to the goal of heaven. And that is not true. That is, scripture does not support that. Jesus says, I am the way. He is the only one. He is the only way um, to experience a resurrection and a life, eternal life. Um, and so it's, that's a really, really important truth. And that is why I decided to go ahead and focus on that verse for the study today. So there is a look at the word study. You very easily could go even deeper than I did. Um, I hope that this kind of inspires you. I get lots of questions about, you know, is it okay that I copy this? Is it okay if I copy this? Yes, it is absolutely. That's why I do these videos for you. Um, and so I kind of walk you through that process. Now, I don't you know, I'm human. I am just sharing what I have studied. So I definitely encourage you to do your own study. If you have questions, go to your pastor before you come to me. Um, that is, you know, a better way to, to look at that. But it's also kind of gives you a structure for how I do it. Um, so hopefully that kind of gives you some confidence to branch out and do it on your own as well. And so I went ahead and like past cards. I do have the card from Ingrid. This is a four by five card. I go ahead and cut down a piece of separate cardstock and um, I include the main verse that I'm studying, list out the Greek word and its usage. And then I try to include at least one or two commentary on here. Um, and that kind of stays with my card. Now I'm actually gonna attach this upside down because um, I'm going to cinch bind, coil bind all these cards at the top. So then when I flip it up, 
I'll be able to read there. And so we'll go ahead and create um, on the front of the card. And I do a separate card, that way I can get really messy and crazy on the front of this card and I don't have to worry about it messing up the back. Uh, with Ingrid's kits over at Open Journey, it really inspires me to get messy and this kit is no different. Now, if mixed media and mess is not your thing, there is plenty of things in here. Um, and so she does have these full um, sheets. These are actually sized to fit in a uh, standard traveler's notebook insert. You'll see this here. So if you wanted to work in a traveler's notebook, you definitely could do that and take your notes. Um, but these also work to cover the front of these cards. So if you want to skip all the mess and the fuss and you really want to do your, you know, you have limited time, focus your time on the study, uh, you could cut this down and then just adhere this to the front of the card and you're done. You're good to go. And you'll see that the imaging matches the images in the devotional, so it's very easy to pair things together. Um, this kit comes with a variety of pieces like that. So there's also these clear stickers. You've got that main image that you can fussy cut out. Now I have seen some comments and some questions about using images of Jesus um, and, and that kind of artwork and, and whether you know scripture supports that or not. And I had similar questions. So I kind of did a quick study before that. Um, and so I will link the gotquestions.org article that I read about that. Um, and it really comes down to worship being the issue. If you are creating images of Jesus and then worshiping that image, that is what scripture is commanding you not to do, not necessarily creating images of Jesus. Now, we don't have any pictures of Jesus. There's intentionally no um, physical descriptions of Jesus in the Bible. Um, so this is just, you know, from Ingrid's heart and, you know, her her kind of art worship that she does. Uh, again, if you feel convicted about that, that's, a you know, a conviction that you may have, um, but I don't find that scripture supports that, but I will link that article article down below if that does, uh, if that's something you want to look into. So all I have to say, there are, um, you know, different images throughout here that you can use. This is on clear sticker paper. This is what I will be using today. Um, but she does also have um, the circular ones. So if you wanted to do the stations with the circles um, on clear sticker and on white sticker paper. So like I said, there is plenty of stuff in here that you can do multiple projects with this kit um, and really kind of extend your study time. So moving on to the art part, I am going to get a little bit messy. So I've pulled out a few things. Um, I'm going to be using some distress paints. Uh, I've got some distress crayons. I've got one of these china markers. These are, they're meant to be written on china like porcelain um, but they kind of smudge and can be water activated uh, i thought that would be kind of fun to play with i do also have an older stencil of ingrid's um, this is from the illuminate illuminated kit uh, i'm not sure if she has these back in the stock i've asked her to if she can because i know a lot of you guys ask for the stencil um, but i think i might use that and then i pulled out a few of her uh, stamp sets like i said there isn't a stamp included in the kit but she does sell her stamps um, individually and as I was looking at the artwork from Station One, there's lots of her scripty handwriting in here. Um, and so I pulled out a few of the stamp sets that have that scripty text. So I wanted to add that in there. And then there was this one here. I can't remember what uh, devotional this is from, but I, I think you can buy this individually, this big I am. Um, since I'm focusing on John 11:25, which is one of those I am statements, I thought I would go ahead and include that. So that's kind of what I pulled together. We'll see how it goes. Um, I will have everything linked down below for you guys. Let me go ahead, put you guys on fast forward, and we'll put together this card for the word resurrection. Okay, so I'm going to start off by masking the bottom of the card. This is what I typically do, but especially if I'm going to be getting extra messy with paints. So I'm using some mint tape. This is slightly different than washi tape, and it's fantastic because it does not tear the paper. So it'll be linked down below for you guys. So we start out by adding some gesso, some white acrylic gesso to the background of this card. I don't always do this, um, but I wanted to smudge some things a little bit later on. And so I knew that would work better if the card was prepped. These are nice cardstock, so I don't, like I said, I don't always prep it, but I, and I just did it very messily, very thin using a brayer. I went ahead and cut out the image that I was going to use from the stickers because I want to keep that in mind. Because these are clear stickers, anything that's behind that sticker will be seen through the sticker. So I need to kind of keep that, you know, in my mind as I am starting into this card. So I will leave kind of a blank area or a more blank area um, to the bottom right-hand corner. So I'm starting out with some broken china distress paint. 
And these first few marks are always kind of the scariest. The key with mixed media is building up layers. And so that's kind of why I like using these cards um, as a place to test things out and to get a feel for things, especially if you're new to this type of process. Before just jumping into a Bible page, this gives you the ability to see how you know, products perform and how things layer and, and, and how to hold your paintbrush and, you know, kind of marks that you like and things like that. So I use a paintbrush to just make some random little marks with broken china. And then I pulled out this grime stencil from Tim Holtz and I'm using some mustard seed uh, distress paint. Some of the paints I have have the dauber type top like this one. The others have the flip top. If you ordered the paints now, they are most likely to come with the flip top, but you can order the dauber tops directly from Ranger, um, which is what I'm slowly kind of switching them out to because I actually prefer that. And you see, I was able to go directly through the stencil with that dauber top. And then again, layers and getting everything to blend together. So I use some Picket Fence Distress, Distress Spray Stain. This is, is not super, super obvious, but it's starting to blend things and soften edges, especially with the stenciling that I did and the marks that I had made. Here I have some candied apple distress paint on my mat and I'm using one of the text stamps. Now, distress paint is permanent when dry. So Tim Holtz doesn't always advise to stamp with it because it can ruin your stamps. So you wanna make sure you immediately clean your stamps while the paint is still wet, which is what I did with that baby wipe. I also go and you know run it under the water with some soap and water, make sure it's good and clean. I haven't had a problem. And then I also just dry brushed a little bit of that candied apple paint um, around the background. You do the similar technique with another text stamp using mustard seed paint. And here's where I'm coming in with the China marker. Now I am drying each layer in between, and that's why I chose to use paints over inks. The paints are not gonna blend. They're gonna layer over the top of each other. I didn't wanna create purples and greens. I wanted the blue to be blue, the yellow to be yellow. So I made sure that was all dry, and then I kinda just made some scribbly little marks. If you hold the pen or the pencil towards the top of it and kinda scribble out, like I scribbled out I am, life, um, it, I know it's a word, but then it also looks scribbly if that makes sense. Again, just layers and, and marks and it slowly builds up and comes together. Now here's that I am stamp. I thought I would initially go in with some antique linen distress paint, but you can see that was like nothing, nothing happened. <laughs> so I'm going back in with some vintage photo distress oxide ink. I am gonna stamp it off a couple times on this mat before I take it to the card. Uh, using oxide inks and distress inks over gesso can be a little tricky. They, they don't wanna dry. So if you use like less ink, um, it's more likely to dry. And then at this point, again, just kind of blending things. So I just used my paper towel, dabbed it around in the paint and just kind of, you know, dry, like made sure it was kind of dry and then tap that around the card and that just creates some other little markings. So then I decided to cut down that sticker a little bit and I'm starting to, you know, kind of finish off the top layers. So this is the Flickering Candle Distress Crayon. This is a limited release crayon. It's one of the mica ones. If it's still available, I'll find it down below for you guys. But I'm gonna blend that through the stencil with a stencil brush. Uh, this has a little bit of shimmer to it and blending it with the crayon and the brush just gives it a softer, more diffused look rather than going in with inks or paint. That would be more opaque. I wanted it very soft and ethereal with those rays. And then I just added some water to the gesso that I had on my mat. And again, I'm just adding some splatters. This is gonna soften up harsh lines, um, kind of give differing tones to the colors that I have on there. I am not a mixed media artist. That is just not a talent of mine. That's something Ingrid is very talented at. But I just had some of her artwork off to the left-hand side off camera, and I was just kind of looking at it and using it as inspiration as I was making my marks and, and that kind of thing. So I added that sticker, and then I am gonna go in and add a little bit more brown to this to kind of tie in the brown from the sticker. So this is a vintage photo distress crayon. These crayons are not permanent like gelatos are, um, but they do dry down and they take they take some work to reactivate um, once they've dried. So I just made some little smudges, some little marks. In the end, it didn't do a whole lot of smudging, but it was able to be done because the, the background had been gessoed. I removed that mask and there you go. I love the final outcome. And as you can see, big difference from those initial couple little blue paint strokes that I made. Um, 
stick with it. Just keep building up layers, building up layers, embrace white space. Um, if it gets to be too much, you can always brayer white gesso over your background and that knocks things back, tones things down. Um, and if you absolutely hate it, do something else on a piece of cardstock, stick it over the top of it, and you're good to go. But I went ahead and stamped the uh, Strong's Concordance number on the back. And then I will adhere this card to the focus card. I am doing it upside down. Again, remember, I want to be able to flip it up um, once it's bound and be able to see it once I flip it in the book. And that is going to be it for this card. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. Check out the description box for links to everything that I used today. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and it was inspiring. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.